How's it going guys? This is like day four of not having internet, so I'm on my phone's hotspot. So today is going to be an easy video. I'm going to show you guys how to overclock your PCs. But yeah, we're just going to do the simplest process of overclocking we can. I think you'll be surprised with how pleasantly easy it is. All right, so first things first, you're going to want to download Heaven Benchmark and you're going to want to download MSI Afterburner. Both those links will be down below in the description. Once you have that done, go ahead and open Heaven Benchmark. Make sure full screen's off. Make sure that this box is unchecked because if it's checked, every time you tab to MSI Afterburner to overclock, it's going to minimize the window like that and MSI Afterburner is just going to be here. So it'll be a lot harder to actually get a good overclock. Uh, go ahead and run the benchmark. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and just run the benchmark. You guys don't have to. You can if you want to. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to run the benchmark and get some performance numbers for you guys. All right, as you can see here, here are our numbers. We got 271.5 average FPS and a score of 6,839. Our minimum FPS was 9.7 and our max FPS was 600.0. I'm not worried about the minimum and maximums, although we should hopefully see a boost in both of those. I'm really worried about the FPS, not so much the score either. Um, the, if we get the average FPS higher, that means that our overclock was successful. So yeah, once you've ran this first benchmark, or if you're not running a benchmark and you just want to overclock anyways, go ahead and open MSI Afterburner. You're going to have to run it as an administrator. I already opened it. Your interface might look a little bit different. It's all the same thing, more or less. The most simple overclock you can do, drag the power limit and temp limit to the right and just click check. That will boost your FPS by quite a bit because you're allowing up to 10% more power to be used. And once you've done that, go ahead and increase your core clock by 50 megahertz until you crash Heaven Benchmark in the background. All right, so Heaven Benchmark just crashed at 200. So now I'm going to lower it by 25 and go to 175. I'm going to lower it and go to 175 and see if we can run it on there. All right, and for some reason, when it's tapped into the foreground, it gets 60 frames for no reason. It's not crashing yet, so we have found our core megahertz overclock. And then for memory clock, you can usually get a lot more out of this than the core clock, so I'd recommend increasing this by 100 each time instead of 50. All right, so having benchmark just crashed at 400, so now I'm gonna go back by 50 and see if that works. Obviously, I have to tab out for some reason because it's broken right now. All right, and it looks like that's working. Uh, we're gonna go up by 10 until we crash again. All right, so our benchmark just crashed at 375, so that's when we push it too far. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dial it back to 360, and that should be our maximum safe overclock. This overclock, I'd say, is a mild overclock. We got a good amount off of the core, but I don't think we got too much off of the memory. My laptop, I could get some pretty insane numbers. I think I ended up getting like 180 and like 750, so that, that was just crazy to me. Yeah, so if you guys wanna save this profile, go ahead and click this little icon right here, and then click on a slot. When you open up slot number two or whatever, number you put it in you can just go ahead and open it here and boom it's applied if you press the number and press the red and windows icon it will apply the overclock at startup so you don't have to keep overclocking it every single time if your games crash while you're playing your games like if you're playing fortnite and you get into a big build fight or whatever and your game crashes lower your overclock that's probably why it crashed if your games are crashing don't be too surprised go ahead and lower it by another 25 on the core megahertz and another 25 on the memory megahertz and that should be your maximum safe overclock without crashes relatively simple concept it's actually more simple than it seems i hope i was able to show that to you guys all right so now i'm going to run the after benchmark for you guys so we can compare the numbers while i was running the benchmark to get the after results after the overclock we ended up crashing so i'm gonna go what i i'm gonna do what i told you guys to do and lower it by 25 on each so i went ahead and lowered it by 25 on each apply it and i'm going to run the benchmark again all right so we did crash again while running the benchmark i went ahead and lowered it again which it was weird because i ran the whole thing through without actually benchmarking it to get the performance numbers and it ran fine and then once i started the actual benchmark it crashed Right, so as you can see here, we actually did end up increasing our FPS by about five. Obviously, if you're on higher settings, it will increase your FPS more because on lower settings, it's more CPU intensive as opposed to GPU intensive, which day we overclocked the graphics card. More realistically, if we saw 120 performance numbers for ultra settings, probably see about 130, 140-ish now. The only reason it's so minimal, even though it did happen, an increase is because we're on lower settings, which is more CPU intensive, but we still got an increase. And in case you guys forgot, here are the performance numbers side by side. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. If this video was entertaining, informative, or worth watching to this point. Please go ahead, drop a like, and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below your numbers that you got for your overclocks. See y'all in the next one. Peace out.